so Hannah Tannenbaum. Our first speaker is Hannah Tannenbaum. She's been diving for most of her life and has been an instructor since 2010. When she leaves this program, she will be the new field station director for international field studies on Andros Island in the Bahamas. She, first, she was first accepted into this program two years ago, but deferred so she could sail around the world, which I think in the end was probably time well spent. <laughs> and she'll be talking to us today, uh, giving her presentation called Diving Local, Thinking Global. Can dive professionals contribute to climate change literacy? Thank you, Samantha. Good morning. The sea, once it casts its spell, holds one in its net of wonders forever. This is the premise of most conservation and education initiatives. The idea that you have this beautiful natural environment, you get people, in this case divers, exploring the natural environment, and they form a personal connection. Uh, oops, excuse me. A personal connection fostering a commitment to the ocean environment, which leads them to want to share their experiences and the potential to become lifelong conservationists. This was certainly true for my life. I was fortunate enough to start diving at the young age of 10, and little scuba diva Hannah had no idea that that first in-water diving experience would prove so transformative for the rest of her life. That diving would eventually take me all over the world, that I would become a dive professional, and that diving and my curiosity for the ocean and wanting to understand it would lead me here to Scripps, to the MAS MBC program. So when I got to Scripps, I was pretty excited to oops, keep diving, and I made some new cohort dive buddies. And it was nice and warm, which was a great transition for those of us who are used to more tropical diving coming to California, cold water diving. Also, when I got to Scripps, we started learning a lot about climate change and learning about climate change in all these different contexts, from sea level rise to ocean deoxygenation and melting of ice caps. We also personally witnessed three record-breaking temperatures at the end of our very own Scripps Pier. So this got me to start thinking about the connection between these two, how climate change affects diving, but also how diving affects climate change. So let's break this down a little bit and think about the ways that the ocean impacts us as divers and all the things that we gain by engaging with the ocean as divers. Things like our environmental consciousness and the potential to become conservationists. Exploration and travel and expanding our horizons, as well as play and joy that we get from being in the ocean. A sense of self and our role in the world, plus the skill development of actual dive training and the confidence building that comes with that. Not to mention all of the things that we gain from the ocean, even if we're not divers, like the oxygen we breathe, the food we eat, ability to transport across the world, and our climate and weather regulation. But let's also flip that on its head and think about the ways that we as divers are impacting the oceans. So diving can have negative environmental consequences to the oceans. And dive research and the industry is primarily focused on these two uh, topics in diver impacts. Plastic pollution, as well as sunscreens and insect repellents, and then physical damage that divers can incur to the marine benthos. And the dive industry has taken steps to address these issues with local conservation measures, things like Paddy's Project Aware Dive Against Debris, addressing the plastics issue. This year, UN Environment, in association with several nonprofits, came out with the first ever course to address this physical damage piece and train dive professionals to mitigate the physical damage that divers can incur to the marine environment. So while the dive industry is trying to tackle these issues, it's really focused on them on a local scale. And no one is really addressing the big global picture of diver impacts or the elephant in the ocean of global climate change. So climate change is already affecting the dive industry and decreasing the financial viability of the industry. This is an example of coral bleaching. In a study done in Bonaire, 76% of divers said that they'd be unwilling to return to Bonaire for the same price if significant bleaching had occurred. Another consequence of climate change that's already affecting the dive industry is increased storm intensity and frequency. So for example, in Florida, an estimated $2.5 billion of tourism revenue was lost after a single hurricane event of Hurricane Irma. So while the dive industry acknowledges that climate change consequences are decreasing the financial viability of diving, there's a disconnect between recognizing their contributions to climate change. So a study done in the UK 
British researchers looked at a popular sport diving magazine. And over a six year period, 140 articles were focused on the consequences of climate change affecting the dive industry. Not a single article focused on diver contributions to climate change, the biggest one being travel. So to this end, I conducted a research study to dive professionals about their perceptions and attitudes towards climate change. I focused on dive professionals with the idea that they're role models for the industry, that they have an economic investment in a healthy marine environment, and that they have access to those new divers who are just having that formative in nature experience with the potential to become lifelong conservationists. I distributed my survey through social media platforms, hoping to reach a pretty international audience, which I did. My respondents represented 31 different nationalities. I received about 400 survey responses, but once I called out any who answered no or unsure on this first question or any incomplete responses, I ended up with 200 usable responses. My survey was designed to test beliefs and attitudes about climate change, and I built an index in order to quantify their qualitative responses. So the index categories were beliefs, knowledge, and actions. An example of a beliefs question is this. The following reflects my current beliefs about global climate change, and the answer choices were adapted from the Yale Climate Communication Program. What's important to know about the knowledge and action sections is that they're self-reported knowledge and actions. So this is a knowledge question example. Rate your comfort in explaining the following concept of climate change. I wasn't testing them on what they actually know about climate change, but asking them to self-report their knowledge of climate change. Likewise with actions, have you changed your personal behaviors due to climate change? Again, I'm not asking them to explain their personal behavior change, but to self-report their personal behavior change. So the idea with this index was that a 100% score would be someone who completely believes in climate change, completely believes they know everything about climate change, and completely believes that they've changed all of their personal behaviors due to climate change. And because these were self-reported beliefs, knowledge, and actions, and dive professionals work in the environment and are financially invested, I expected that the index was, results would be pretty high. The scores would be pretty high for dive professionals. So I was surprised when my overall index average was only 58%. So I'm gonna break this down into the component parts. And this was how beliefs, knowledge, and actions scored across the board for my uh, respondents. Beliefs was the only category which ever received a maximum score. And it was double the scores of those of actions. I compared this index to a number of independent variables. And I'm just gonna share uh, the results for a couple of them that I think are particularly interesting. The first one is gender. I surveyed, I compared males and females, and females actually scored higher than males in every category. And this is interesting because currently in the dive industry, only 24% of dive professionals are women. So this suggests that increasing women in the dive industry wouldn't it only benefit social equality and gender equality, but would also have conservation benefits. Another one that is interesting is California divers. I specifically targeted California divers through a local diving listserv with the idea that California is a climate positive state. We take a lot of action on climate change in California. So I thought California divers would score higher on the index than those not from California. And what I found was actually the opposite. Californians scored lower on every category except for beliefs. And this is interesting because we tend to think of those of us from California or living in California as being much more environmentally aware um, but these results showed that they were not as conscious. So going back to the overall index breakdown, these were the independent variables that I compared this index to. Things like demographics, their employment status, their training organization affiliation, as well as gender, the geography of national origin and nations of employment, and then other variables such as time spent on communication and attitudes about standards. But none of these independent variables serve to explain this dichotomy that I observed between really high beliefs and really pretty low actions. So this is what I expected, that beliefs would inform actions, but this is not what I saw. And it suggested to me that the issue is one of implementation, that just because you have high belief in something doesn't mean that you know how to implement that behavior. So what needs to happen for the dive industry is we need to focus less on informational campaigns and more on action items, and action with a three-pronged approach. Political participation, 
So dive professionals, regardless of their national origin and where they're working in what country, they can become involved in local politics. And that's a way to promote climate positive action and behavior. Dive professionals can put pressure on the dive industry itself to take greater accountability for carbon emissions and the waste that the industry produces. And lastly, dive professionals need to maintain commitment to personal behavior change and look at their own actions and how they can do better in more climate positive ways. And through this Venn diagram, this is how we can have a future for the dive industry. So one last time, we can now rewrite this. The sea, once it casts its spell, holds one in its net of wonders forever. I think of the holding one as that belief piece that we need to stop emphasizing so much and rewrite this to be a call to action. The sea, once it casts its spell, must inspire one to protect its net of wonders forever. Thank you so much. And do we have any questions? Erica. Thank you. <laughs> they are not. Um, I, my gender breakdown my, uh, was not representative of the actual dive industry, so I actually received about 50-50 men and women. And as I said, the dive industry is only about 24% women. The California is not statistically significant because my California sample size was pretty small. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Any other questions? Great. Thank you.